We all must have seen how when we open a bottle of soda or a favorite cold beverage, small bubbles of gas start coming out, creating a very delightful fizz or sometimes what looks like a magical effervescence, right? Now, we also know that this gas that comes out of the carbonated drink is nothing but carbon dioxide gas bubbles. Now, interesting thing is that the solubility of carbon dioxide in water is moderate at best. That is, it has moderate solubility in water. So then, how are we able to manage keeping so much carbon dioxide dissolved in our beverage drinks that as soon as you open, we have this amazing fizzy experience? Well, that's where Henry's Law comes into play. Yes, and that's what we are going to discuss in this video today. Henry's Law states that at a constant temperature, the solubility of a gas is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas that is present above the surface of the liquid or solution. So that is, to increase the solubility of carbon dioxide gas in a drink, we have to increase its partial pressure. And how do we do that? By increasing the pressure of carbonation. You see, by increasing the pressure, we increase the partial pressure of the gas. For example, let's assume this is a container with a gas liquid mixture and this is the seal. Then if you have gas bubbles here, by increasing the pressure, we are forcing these gas particles to strike the liquid surface more often. And the more number of gas particles strike the liquid surface, greater will be its solubility. Now, how much will the solubility increase? Like, will the solubility increase indefinitely? Absolutely no. Solubility of the gas will increase until a new dynamic equilibrium is established. Where the number of gas particles entering the liquid is same as those that leave the solution phase. So by applying Henry's law, if we increase the pressure above the liquid, the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide also increases. And as a result, the concentration of the dissolved carbon dioxide in the liquid increases proportionally. And this is why when you open a pressurized soda bottle, you hear a fizz because now the pressure has decreased such that the solubility of the dissolved carbon dioxide in the liquid decreases and all of that extra carbon dioxide that comes out of the solution goes out in the form of fizz. Now, how do we quantify the Henry's law? Well, if we use mole fraction as a measure of solubility, so let's say mole fraction is x, then mole fraction of the gas in the solution is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas that is above the solution. This is nothing but partial pressure of the gas is equal to kH into mole fraction of the gas. Now this kH is also called Henry's law constant. So if you take out this kH then you can see that it is inversely proportional to the mole fraction of the gas. So what does it mean? It means a gas that has higher value of kH will have lower value of solubility in a particular liquid. Different gases have different values of kH at the same temperature and this means that kH is also a function of the nature of a particular gas. Now interestingly for certain gases like nitrogen and oxygen this kH value is found to increase with temperature. With increase in temperature the solubility of these gases in water decreases because we are referring to water in this particular case. So it's also convenient that we keep our beverage drinks usually chilled because as we just saw in the case of nitrogen and oxygen, solubility of gases in liquids generally decrease with increase in temperature. Keeping a beverage can chilled means the lower or the colder temperature also helps keep our carbon dioxide stay dissolved in the liquid. Henry's law has many such important applications in our everyday life like in beverage industry, food industry and so on. So let's go ahead and solve a few questions based on Henry's law in the next video.